Uh, this mini lecture is about acidity. First of all, let's uh, define what an acid actually is. An acid is a compound that produces H plus ions when you dissolve it in water. And a base is considered to be a compound that produces OH minus when we dissolve it in water. If we want to figure out the more acidic compound out of two compounds, then we would choose the one that produces more H plus. That will be more acidic. And the other thing, this is the most important thing, is that the compound that produces the more stable anion will produce more H+. Plus. So what I want you to come away from this discussion with is that the acidity of a compound depends upon the stability of the anion that it forms. The acidity of a compound depends upon the stability of the anion that it forms. And you'll see a lot more of this as we go. Now there's a few terms with which I want you to be familiar. First of all, we know this is a base because it forms OH- when you dissolve it in water. This is an acid because it forms H+, when you dissolve it in water. A base will form a conjugate acid once it picks up an H+, an acid will form a conjugate base once it loses H+. Conjugate in this instance simply means partner because each comes from a base, come, forms a conjugate acid, and acid forms a conjugate base. Let's say you've got an example, NH3 and CH4. You want to figure out which one of those is the stronger acid. So the first thing you want to do is show how the compound forms H plus and some kind of anion. All right, let's uh, do an example of this. All right, let's say we've got NH3. We know that if we're talking about acidity, we know H plus is going to form. We have to figure out what's going to form with it. Well, clearly, based on the atoms, you've got three hydrogens here and one hydrogen over here, so we must have NH2 over here. But also, we've got to worry about electrical neutrality as well. Over here, this has zero charge, but this actually has a plus charge, so this has to have a negative charge. So we know that whatever we get, we're going to get an anion with H+. Now, on another basis, here's how we can look at it. We all know that a bond is going to consist of two electrons. However, one electron belongs to the H and one electron belongs to the N, if we're talking about where the electrons are actually going. If I just take away the H, and that's what I'd be doing if I took away an H+, plus, remember an H plus doesn't have any electrons, it's just a proton. And what's going to happen is it's effectively going to give, let's put a lone pair here as well, it's going to give its electron to the nitrogen. So the electron that used to belong to the hydrogen now belongs to the nitrogen. That gives it a negative charge. The CH4 is treated the same way. We make that into CH3 minus an H+. Plus. In the second step, we figure out which anion is more stable and why it's more stable. And what we see here is that NH2- minus is more stable than CH3- minus because N is more electronegative than C. Therefore, it handles the negative charge better. Now, the reason we talk about the stability of the anions is that the NH3, because the NH2- minus is more stable than the CH3, is going to form more NH2- minus than the CH4 will form CH3-. minus. That's because the NH2- minus is more stable. So we're going to see a lot more NH2- minus than we would CH3- minus for the same amount of compound. If we're getting more NH2-, minus, we're going to get more H+. Plus. If we're getting more H+, plus, it means that is going to be more, this compound here is going to be more acidic. That's the basis of all of this. So the last thing we do is we write a statement that links the stability of the anion to acidity. And here's what we say. Since NH2- minus is more stable than CH3-, minus, NH3 is more acidic than CH4. 
Well, let me tell you what would be wrong then is to say this. NH2 minus is more stable than CH3 minus. Therefore, NH2 minus is more acidic than CH3 minus. The anions are not acidic. If you are saying these are acidic, you're saying they're going to release H+, plus, which they're not. The things that are releasing H+, plus are the original compounds. The original compounds we were asked about. So the proper way to write the statement is to say NH2- minus is more stable than CH3-, minus. therefore NH3 is more acidic than CH4. Next, let's talk about the inductive effects of, on the anion stability. So let's say you've got two compounds like this. You can clearly see that the difference between them is the positioning of the fluorine atom. All right, let's talk a little bit about polarity and its relationship to polarity, uh, to, to um, stability. Now, if you think back to our discussion on electronegativity and polarity in one of the earlier uh, mini lectures, what we found was that if we've got a CF bond, which I can express like this, I've got a C here and an F here, that means there's a C here and an F here, we've got polarity occurring because the electrons in the CF bond are closer to the fluorine than they are to the C. And this is, of course, due to fluorine's greater electronegativity than C. Now, if the electrons in the bond are closer to the F than they are to the C, what's going to happen is that the F will have a delta minus and the C will have a delta plus. And remember, whenever we're talking about polarity, the delta minus always goes on the more electronegative of the two atoms. So when we've got this situation, we're going to have a delta plus here and a delta minus here. And the delta plus is on this atom directly connected to the F. All right, so here's the effect of that. We've got a delta plus on the C. We've got a delta plus on this C over here. Since this delta plus is closer to the negative charge, it's more able to stabilize it. This is a through bond effect. And what effectively is happening is that the delta plus is kind of sucking electrons away from this C and making the delta plus on this C even larger than it actually is, thus stabilizing negative charge. So any time you've got any time you've got a uh, let's see, let's put up another one. So we've got a delta plus here. We've got electrons in this bond here. And those electrons are going to be attracted more to this C because of the delta plus. And what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to make this delta plus even larger. And that's already a delta plus because of the delta minus on the oxygen up here. Now since this delta plus gets larger, it can stabilize the negative charge. Remember, positives and negatives will stabilize each other if they're close by. If they were like charges, a positive and a positive, that would, uh, that would repel. Now, the closer the delta plus is to the O minus, the greater that effect will be. So, since this delta plus is closer to the O minus than this delta plus would be, then we can say that this anion will be more stable than this one. All right, so we draw, first of all, First of all, we draw out the anions, and the way we do that is we take the H off the oxygen and we leave a negative charge on the O. You might be wondering, well, why do I take an H off the O and not one of the C's? Well, the reason is, like we talked about earlier, an O negative is more stable than a C negative because it's more electronegative and it's going to be able to stabilize the negative charge better. So we know the H is going to have to come off the O, that leaves a negative charge on the O. So that's the first thing. Which anion is more stable and why? Well, A minus, which I 
calling this one here is more stable because the delta plus is closer to VO minus, this delta plus is closer to VO minus, which leads to greater stabilization of that anion. The last thing, we write a statement that links anion stability to acidity. So A minus is more stable than B minus, therefore AH, which is this compound, is more acidic than BH. Remember, AH is going to form more A minus because A minus is more stable than B minus. In this next one, we're looking at a different effect. The clear difference between these two examples is that fluorine and bromine have been switched. They're the same distance apart, so we're not talking about distance anymore with this one. So here's our diagrams. What we can do is look at the delta plus. And what we're going to see is that the delta plus on the C here will be larger in the case of fluorine than it will be on the in the case of the bromine. Now if we look at these delta minuses here, you see the electrons are going to be closer to the fluorine than they would be to the bromine because fluorine is more electronegative than bromine. What that means is the delta minus on the F is larger than the delta minus on the Br. If the delta minus is larger on the F, the delta plus will be bigger on this C relative to this C. Big delta minus, big delta plus, small delta minus, small delta plus. So what we're seeing here is a big delta plus on this one and a smaller delta plus on this one. So doing the same thing, we take the H plus off the O, leave an O negative. A minus is more stable because F is more electronegative than Br. A bigger delta minus leads to a bigger delta plus, which gives better stabilization of the anion. And that's the best way to explain that situation. The last thing we do is we write a statement linking the anion stability to the acidity. A minus is more stable than B minus, therefore AH is more acidic than BH. And again, we're going to form more A minus than we will B minus, so we're getting more H plus in each instance. H plus here and H plus here. The last one I want to talk about is the effect of adding more of the same group to the same atom. And what we're seeing here is two fluorines versus one fluorine over here. And we do the same thing. We can find that, that we have a delta minus and delta minus. That gives a delta plus here. A delta minus gives a delta plus on this carbon here. So when we're looking at that, a delta minus, one delta minus will produce a delta plus on this C. And two delta minuses, though, will produce a bigger delta plus. So little delta plus, big delta plus over here, due to the fact we've got two delta minuses attached to the same carbon atom. All right, so again, we do the same thing. We take the H plus off the O, that leaves an O negative. We take the H plus off the O, that leaves an O negative. Which anion's more stable and why? A minus is more stable because there are more F's attached to the C, which gives a bigger delta plus on that C. If we have a bigger delta plus, that's going to give better stabilization of the anion than a smaller delta plus, which we're seeing over here. And the last thing we do then is write a statement linking anion stability to acidity. And we can say that since A minus is more stable than B minus, Therefore, AH is more acidic than BH. Remember, the more stable the anion, the more anion you will get from the compound. You get more anion, you'll get more H+, and that's what makes these compounds more acidic. And always remember, it's these compounds that we're talking about and comparing their acidity, and we're using the stability of their anions to do that job.